You've heard of the ship of Theseus, but have you heard of the ship of state? Why should we care what Plato says? Because Plato um, witnessed the decline of democracy and then wrote this book. <laughs> so it might be relevant. Democracies have been collapsing for a long time, and Plato witnessed the decline of his democracy um, 2,500 years ago. Um, I uh, am learning about this from this book. Uh, I didn't buy it. I got it for free from the library. So thanks to the Libby app if you want to sponsor a guy. Um, but I thought that I would make a just a, a, I thought that I would explain wh what the ship of state is and why it is relevant to today. Also, since this might be our first time meeting, I'm Charlie. I have a master's in bioethics and a degree in physics and a degree in philosophy, and I used to teach physics, and now I do research into artificial intelligence ethics, and I'm writing a book about it, and I also make content about the internet on the internet about all of these things. Generally construed back to Plato and the collapse of democracy. The ship of state is a thought experiment, and it asks the question, who should be in charge in a democracy? Who should steer the rudder of the world? In this thought experiment, it is stipulated that the person in charge is a little short-sighted and his knowledge of seafaring is equally deficient. He's also a little hard of hearing. Is any of this a little too on the nose? The current, the current, current leader is a little too old. <laughs> what, uh, what are we going to do about it? What ensues among the sailors is a power struggle for who should be in charge. The sailors are quarreling with each other about steering the ship, each of them thinking that he should be the captain, even though, and this is what's important about the thought experiment, everybody's vying to be in charge, and all the people that are vying to be in charge um, have never learned the art of navigation. Plato explains that there's two ways for us to become a captain. One of the ways is to, by force, take over the ship. You're just stronger than everyone else, and you take over the ship by force. Notably, being good at taking over a ship by force doesn't make you good at navigating. It doesn't make you good at the, it doesn't give you expertise in sailing and seafaring. It just means that you're good at dominating other people. The second way to become captain is to be clever at persuading people that you ought to be in charge. And the main insight from Plato's ship of state is that being able to convince people that you should be in charge is not actually the same thing as knowing how to navigate the stars, to understand when the storms are coming. Being able to persuade people that you should be in charge is not the same thing as being a good leader. That is one of Plato's critiques of the concept of democracy, that probably holds true today. The thing is that there are good navigators and there are good sailors, but the good navigators and the good sailors are the ones staring at the stars at night, navel gazing. Plato says that they might call them a stargazer, a babbler, and a good for nothing, <laughs> right? The people who have developed expertise in useful skills are not the people that have developed expertise in the art of politics, which is a completely different set of skills. Democracy, generally construed, um, rewards those who have invested time in the art of persuasion and not necessarily those who have gained expertise. I would add to what Plato is saying that that is particularly true when we exist in a democracy that is mediated by phones. The people who control, who are skilled at manipulating media, are the ones most likely to become in charge. If Plato were alive today, he might add a third way to become captain, which is in the era of online media, misinformation campaigns are another way to power. With how fast everything moves, it can be hard to remember that uh, election interference was in fact well documented. There are pretty freaky examples of uh, specific misinformation campaigns targeted at different populations. You can send targeted Facebook ads to one population and an entirely different set of targeted Facebook ads to a different population. Um, this would be like going around the ship and whispering in different sailors' ears their contradictory reasons about why you should be in charge. One historical example of this I actually already covered. I just, the title keeps changing in this video because I keep changing my mind about it, but it's called Misinformation in Movies, um, Incredibles 2, where I look at um, it's not going to show any of the things. Um, 
I really like this movie for one, but um, the reason that I'm showing you is be happy for her. Sorry. Um, the reason that I'm showing you is because there is a researcher named Carol Cal Cad Cadwallader. She's British. Um, and this researcher, Carol Cadwallader, documents how disinformation was used specifically in Brexit in this process called political micro-targeting. You can check out that video. I'll link it in the description below. Anyway, so the reason that I'm bringing this up is because Plato gives us in the example of the ship of state a concept that we can learn, which is that um, democracies are not necessarily just the tyranny of the majority at times, but they can also become the tyranny of the persuasive or in the era of the attention economy the tyranny of the outrageous which tends to rise to the top of the attention algorithms that in part govern the world plato's solution to this is uh to appoint uh, the people in charge that are the best stargazers the best navigators are the ones that are supposed to be in charge and in plato's estimation that's philosophers um so he thinks that we should have the philosopher king um or the philosopher queens if you're a fan of um Buxton and Whitting's book uh, that goes through some of the female philosophers in history. I will include that in my reading list also. Um, but I don't think that this solution works. Um, the it, uh, Putting the people that are technically skilled in charge is sometimes called a technocracy. There's also problems with this, which I can discuss in other videos. Um, so... <laughs> I don't want to make a super pessimistic video that has no solutions um, and just says that, hey, uh, historically speaking, democracies collapse because people um, become in charge that ought to not be in charge. Um, that's true, though. So oh. so to not end this on a terribly sad note, um, I would add a couple of things. Missing from this analysis so far is uh, corporate power. Corporate power um, and the creation of a new feudalism is not something that is discussed in this little analogy called the ship of state. Another thing that is not discussed is the founding fathers and the idea that uh, the prevention of tyranny is something that should be baked into uh, the documents that run government. We have written amendments um, to the Constitution before and recognizing that uh, the system that was put in place is not perfect and is sort of falling apart at the seams for lack of a better word is another lesson that we might take away from this and recognizing that we may need to add mechanisms to democracy that allow for the distribution of power when too much power has been accrued by either a ruling class of uh, corporate folks or an individual who has amassed too much power. To translate that into the broader political landscape that we exist in right now, um, a democratic socialism may be one of those things. Democratic socialism is about taxing super rich people and giving resources to the rest of the public, right? Um, we can think of this in terms of capitalism and who deserves what, or we can think of democratic socialism as a mechanism baked into democracy, specifically <laughs> neoliberal um, late stage capitalism democracies to take power away from people who have accrued too much power. I said that I would broaden that out and say it in my so the most pretentious way possible. Um, social programs, um, like the ones that we constantly vote against um, in this book, uh, Heather McGee, she goes into more details about this. Social programs are often conceived of as the question of whether or not um, we, whether or not people in poverty deserve resources, or the question of whether or not people who deserve housing, right? These questions are often baked into the format of does this individual deserve a resource? Perhaps we can learn from the ship of state a broader reframing, which is to recognize that moving resources from ruling classes to non-ruling classes is in fact a social mechanism for distributing power, um, which is something that we need to prevent the downfall of democracy. Yeah, okay, that works. That works for me. Maybe that's a little bit more hopeful than, hey, democracies die every couple hundred years. And So by way of conclusion, um, by the power invested in me, by my hundred thousands of dollars of debt, getting a master's degree in bioethics, um, and also uh, join my Patreon. <laughs> my goal is a teacher's salary, my old job. Um, and by the power invested in me by my hundreds of thousands of followers, I decree that um, more people should know about the ship of state, or at least as many people should know about the ship of state as know about the trolley problem, um, which is uh, uh, an overplayed, dumb problem that has taught us what it needs to have taught us. And we should move on to older things like the ship of state that's too strong of a claim the trolley problem is fine there's things to learn from it i'm just sick of it by now and there's plenty of other philosophical thought experiments that we should know about 
that's all. I'm Charlie. This is That Makes Sense to Me. Thanks for watching. Click um, like and share and subscribe and um, the buy the books or the reading affiliate list and all the other things, the influencer things that I have to say in order to keep the channel going. Okay, goodbye. Happy reading.